Monday Lit, the latest big Asian tune to come from Manchester and we've been very happy to champion it all this time and we've sort of got the godfather oh, of all that. I wouldn't go there, I wouldn't go there. Wouldn't go there. Um, but no, I mean like, uh, first of all, a great tune by um, um, Lucky, Kami Kane, Joash, Dada Flo and uh, Freezy. Uh, but no, I've worked with, work, I've worked with three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, some almost a decade mm-hmm. um, shout out to kami kane yeah and for the people listening this is mr sam malik welcome to the show it's a pleasure to have you on my well, pleasure is mine thank you very much for inviting me cool. so for the people listening do you want to maybe just tell us a bit about your background what you do and obviously rep in manchester yeah um so yeah so just kind of keeping it concise um my background's running studios and through that done a series of music management, music projects um, and things like that. So as I was saying, you know, the three guys on the previous track um, are pretty much have been involved in my journey as much as I've been involved in theirs. Um, and and quite recently I'm working with an, a contact Manchester and through that there's a lot of more Manchester based project, international based projects that I'm working with. So yeah, so my 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 background's pretty much running recording studios and managing music slash artists. Mm-hmm. Cool. So obviously, when you reached out, um, we we knew each other. Of each yeah, other. Obviously, we've yeah. run with a lot of the same crowds. Yeah. But it's my understanding that going into twenty twenty two, you've got big plans for events for series. So do you want to just get into what um, that is? Yeah. So. One we started a couple of months ago, uh, Monday Mic Night, which is um, an open mic night that happens every first Monday of the month. Um, and I kind of inherited that. Um, so that that open mic night was running monthly since 2002. Um, wow. And then there was a bit of a dip. Um, I t- got involved with it in 2017 and 18. But then the building contact theatre was going through a renovation project. It was like, right, okay, as soon as we back up up and running, it's one of the events that we're going to do. Um, but the the event title, it, it had, you know, some other um, uh, prehistoric drama attached to it. But mm-hmm. also, I used to run an open mic night slightly separate to this um, that used to be called Monday Mic Night. So it was like a merge of brands. Um, and then we got the funding and we got the money to run it whilst it was locked down so i did the artists that i was going to work with um the first eight of them um we did a video series which was a very lyric like video d- very daily duppy style um, was it the one with the purple, purple background? background yeah, yeah so I mean, yeah. we've always been talking about it but i like it was had it in the back of my head but yeah yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking so about, yeah. that was basically um uh, during uh the pandemic slash lockdown um, yeah, so we did them, and then from November onwards, we've started running it in person. Um, and yeah, it's 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 been a regular sold out event. Um, I have to deal with the problem of people trying to get in after tickets are sold out, which is a problem you'd rather mm. deal with than the other way around, as we were saying off air before. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather deal with a busy night than uh, not a busy night. Um, but yeah, I think what, um, one of the most important things for that event is it's a platform for emerging musicians uh, one of the vibes that i one of the vibes that i try and portray and preach to the musicians that i'm working with on any of my projects is go and test a song that's you're still making you know that's the kind of event it is where it's unfinished it's not you know um and then what be, because the audience is 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 musicians and fellow creatives there's a different vibe about that event so we don't get your regular punters that come to that event um it's more fellow creatives, fellow poets, rappers, singers, or anyone that's involved in the Manchester music scene. Um, so yeah, so the vibe's slightly different. Um, I'll go to the next point, which on the one on the first Monday of January, which is the third, Joash is doing his EP launch, mm-hmm. uh, which you're invited to. Yeah. Um, Definitely looking forward to being yeah, there. Yeah, so um, last month we had um, um, an artist called Lay Full Stop. Um, mm-hmm. She did her... So she was the headliner, for example, the month before that was no space. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, so yeah, so every month I'm going to try on, when I say a headliner, they don't have to be like, you know, a big established artist. I don't think that's the priority. I think with Joe Ash, for example, if, if, if no disrespect to him, he's still emerging. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call him established yet. However, because he's co- 
he's coming with a body of work he deserves the respect of you know it's it's not just one or two songs it's a full body of work he's got a full set to his name yeah exactly and obviously you, as you say he's emerging but the songs that he has already done have been well received yeah, so yeah he, absolutely he's, I mean, he's got that step those stepping stones yeah no absolutely i mean you know when i was saying emerging i'm not i'm not taking any limelight away from joash mm. um you know i think he's been doing great work uh we've been doing great work together um and i'm i'm, I'm really excited um and looking forward to what joash is gonna do in the next 10 years as mm. the phone call that we had the other day like i yeah. would like my relationship with him professionally and personally to be 10 years so the yeah. plans that me and joash are talking about are 10-year plans and it's mad because obviously this isn't to say putting any limit on what you can achieve by a certain yeah. age or anything like that but i think it's more pointing out how talented he is at the age which he's at because in 10 yeah. years he's not even going to be 30 yet. yeah so no, like... absolutely like he's already i mean i remember when he so the project that I, I, I deliver is called Level Up. So it's a year-long project that works with um, musicians that are at the verge of breakthrough um, and then works with them for a year and, it, you know, they kind of get um, um, X amount of studio hours for free. They work with industry, active musicians, whether they're producers, mix engineers, etc. But also we finance their whole body of work. So the music videos and everything that they launch is part of that project. And I remember when Joe Ash applied, um, he already was on BBC Asia Network. Um, and I thought, right, okay, that's amazing because one of the things that I'm trying to do right now, and it's not because of the background that I come from, from an ethnic um, point of view, but I'm excited with British Asian music. Um, I predict that within the 10 years that I'm talking about, there'll be like Grammy award winners um, within the British Asian music scene um, and and being a contributor and a, a, a fellowship of that scene, um, I would like to have a small slice by the time it does that. Not of the Grammy Award, but the scene. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the work that people like me, Cammy Kane, um, On The Beat, um, and everyone that's doing that team, is, is it's not so individual, it's more scene development. So we predicting and working towards the Manchester British Asian music scene to to, 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 to really like blow the roof mm -hmm. um, with the talent. People like Jawash, you know, Bobby Bobby Friction calls him the glue of Manchester right now. <laughs> I've called him the Brown Pharrell because um, yeah. everyone wants to work with him. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to work with him. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so I'm I'm entertaining phone calls right now. Is they want to work with Jawash and it, it's exciting and fantastic. And mm -hmm. one thing I love about Jawash um, and to be honest, like Dada and Kami Kane is the versatility, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I think the British Asian music scene that these guys are developing is 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 multi-genre breaking down barriers um uh, like the conversations that like i told joash that i want him one day to be on rolling stones or um 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 um, um, um gq and those kind of magazines mm -hmm. and I, only because i see the marketing machine of music going brown very soon mm. so what do you think it is obviously you just said that everyone um who's doing bits right now is very versatile but um, you've said in the in past few minutes how you've been in the game now for like 20 years, I'm, pre I'm presuming at least because yeah. it's 2002. Um, so you will have seen, obviously, what we maybe call the first wave of British Asian mainstream. Yeah. Um, and now if we're talking about that maybe happening in some form, again, to the level of Grammy Award winning, yeah. etc. Yeah. What do you think it is that it, what what's it, what is it about now about that's this new wave of artists that's like making that 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 is a quite a multi layered question. I'm thinking that I mean this is where it comes down to really. I think the consumers of that music is getting diverse. Um, so if you look at um, if you look at like the whole drill and grime scene, there's 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 plenty Asian rappers and singers that are already on like those channels so uh, i won't mention those channels but you know those kind of channels out yeah. there um, they're already there and then you think hang on who are listening to these are these like asian listeners or is it a wider listener which i think that's what it is um like if you go back to whole crompton nwa album they went platinum then because the white man was buying it mm. you know if it was if it was their fellow 
um, Afro Caribbean communities that they, they, they yeah. wouldn't have made it platinum. It only, it only goes so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's what's happening to the music. Um, you know, there's there's Asian musicians that are performing in Glastonbury's and you know your Reading and your V Fest and things like that. Um, mm. th- you know, they're going there, and I think this is where it's happening. But also, there's 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 diverse music being made. Um, there's nothing wrong with your traditional Asian sounds at all, but I think the current wave of British Asian musicians are making music um, that were making music music based on the influences um, that they've been growing up which weren't necessarily your Bollywood and your Bangra and your folk Punjabi or your folk um, Pakistani you know like it, it wasn't that kind of music mm-hmm. um, so yeah so I think that's why so that wave of music is a, the consumerism is a lot more diverse sure Obviously, we've talked a bit about why you think there's so much high potential for the British Asian scene and especially Manchester British Asian scene to blow in the next 10 years. Um, I'm curious as to what your thoughts on specifically um, emerging Manchester Manchester artists of Asian um, heritage. How do you feel they fit within the general... um, up and coming Manchester scene. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like they're sort of in their own lane, or is it? Do they come part and parcel in it? Like, because obviously everyone, great, everyone always says, "Oh yeah, Manchester's got a great scene coming up." Yeah. But do you think that um, the British Asians are kind of valued or seen in the same sense? We've got work left to do mm-hmm. in that, um, and which is one of my motivations with working with these artists. And I've always said it when I started working with. <coughs> like Dada, Tammy Kane, is that that is the goal where conversations are happening um, uh, with that scene in, 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 in rooms where that it's never happened before. So we were talking about your Rolling Stones and your GQs and, and your, 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 you know, your things like that. Um, I think it, it belongs definitely, you know, because they, you know, the the British people that contribute to the music market on a wider scale, I think there needs to be um, a, 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 an acceptance, and I don't mean that from a place of sympathy, but a, an acceptance from the consumer of that music, where and it's already happening. If you think about like the Afrobeat scene, like, like Latin hip hop did it, you know, French hip hop did it, you know, where language was irrelevant, and it, you know, these tunes were being rotated in clubs in festivals in in radio stations etc so i think that the answer to your question i think it they deserve to be absolutely is it happening um not so much um do i see it happening yes um and i think that's pretty much um i think what we were saying off air before is it's one of the drives of of me working with these guys mm-hmm. is trying to get it played um on 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 mainstream channels um um and and being uh, british asian is not a barrier but it's an actual lens to look through or you know that these are you know this is um music ma- being made within the uk out of a niche community that has a universal because that's what people like Jawashes and Tada songs etc they've got a universal audience mm-hmm. just right now it's just rattling around in manchester yeah there's, there is literally so much potential and yeah. I've found that in general I don't think it's just music, I think it's anything creative at the moment, there's so much to consume mm-hmm. there's so readily available just on your phone, you can scroll and find whatever that sometimes the 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 core talent and that, that you see and you're like, yes, this could really do really well in such a wider mm-hmm. audience I want to say overlooked, but maybe just doesn't even get a chance to even come to the limelight yeah. just because there's it's fighting so much just to be yeah. heard sort yeah, of yeah, thing. Yeah. But yes, that's why it's really good. Obviously, you've got. But there's a lot yourself. of work. There's a lot of work. I mean, like for example, some of the international work that I'm doing right now and getting prepared for um, is we just basically trying to make little little cracks in Canada, Paris, Denmark, UAE, India like little, little cracks. And, and I think once that little crack's there, then more and more water can just sieve through and just make sure. that, you know, crack bigger. Um, and yeah, I, I wouldn't say, you know, there's there's um, um, any other challenges apart from 
you know what the usual challenge is from any up and coming artist is trying to go international is the networks that you have um, and also your sound as well it has to be universal so there's plenty songs around the world or even you know what we've listened to has a very um, time framed sonic vibe or it has a very local vibe um, you know afro beats for example is not new it's only when they started using certain you know vsts and certain pluggings and certain singing styles etc that it got out into the world uh, on the western world same thing with the you know music things like imran khan do you know it was quite that's why i i, I respect erani a lot because he that was craftsmanship what he did so he was bringing in the north african vibe the asian vibe and the european vibe together like if you listen to those beats everyone will call it euro hip hop like people that don't understand what he's saying mm. that's euro hip hop that like that's what's happening everywhere in european um 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 uh, music market but then vocally you know he's punjabi you know his songs are punjabi so everybody else that's there's asians i mean i'm not punjabi but i appreciate every single one of his tracks on the album on the album i think the album was a masterpiece um um but yeah so i think that's pretty much what what i think yeah absolutely they belong um and also there's a lot of work that needs to be done to kind of remove those barriers and sure. take away the fact uh, that they're brown yeah it, it's such a tricky one isn't it because it's like you want to champion like that's what we're trying to do on the show we're trying to champion um south asian artists music particularly um up and coming artists as yeah. well but then you don't want it to just be a case of ticking brown yeah yet, you, brown know, you know what i mean yeah. like the, it, you want them to be recognized for their talent as yeah. well so it's such a fine line um probably gonna um come into the end of the interview now but just to wrap things up do you maybe want to just remind us or let us know what you've got planned coming up and also where people can find you on socials yeah so the most immediate thing is i know you're going to speak about it um uh, i think next week or the week after but i might as well just say it so joash's ep is dropping um, on the 13th Mm -hmm. which is in a couple of days there's pre-saves links out there so if anyone's listening that supports my work joash's work or anybody else's work please do go and support that um so on the 13th is he's, he's, he's dropping his debut ep and then on the 3rd of january he's doing a launch night um and i think the ticket link is on my bio and the best place to try and reach out to me is is uh, actually wherever you want to go uh, whether it's twitter facebook um instagram um linkedin um it's sam malik social mm-hmm. so just my name and then social all one word um um, I've not done a Google check for a while, but I think I'll, I'll come up on maybe page number two now because, <laughs> you know, I'm a bit quiet. But yeah, uh, Sam Malik Social, you'll be able to find me throughout any platform. 